Back in May earlier this year, Games Workshop hosted an online event over their Twitch streams and over on the Warhammer community called Warhammer Fest Online, in which they unveiled loads of upcoming models. There was a plethora of things to look at, including a very tasty orc release called the Beast Snagger Box. This box would include 20 Beast Snagger boys, which are different to normal boys in the sense that they look a bit more vicious, are wearing some animal hide and some scales as well. You also had one of the best looking runt herds with undeniably the best hair in the Forge Mass Millennium and a squad of squig hog riders. Flash forward to July 24th and anyone such as myself that was lucky enough to be able to pre-order this box would start to receive it in the post. I did. Now I'm going to be painting these miniatures and I'm going to be making some YouTube videos about it. This first one is all about how to paint the squig hogs. I'm not going to cover the riders in this video, just the actual squig hogs. The riders will be painted the same way as the Beast Snagger boys, which I will cover in next week's video. That's right, I'm doing three videos on this Beast Snagger box. We're going to have the squig hogs, Beast Snagger boys, and the beautiful one hers. If you want to see the rest of the series, make sure to hit that subscribe button and maybe give this video a thumbs up or comment so that more people will discover this video as well. That's enough chit chat, let's dive in and start painting this beautiful, beautiful squig. So the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is pick our color scheme. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint the classic red squigs. I'm not gonna be doing the counter shading on the bottom, that pale bit that you often see in. Games Workshop paint jobs. I did initially plan to, but as I got into painting this miniature, I realized that the uh, underside of the squig actually looked really nice how it was when I'd got to the stage where I was gonna start doing the counter shading. So, um, in order to pick what colors we're going to be using for both the shadows and the highlights, I'm gonna jump over to the color wheel for a second. Now if you look at where the red is on this colour wheel, you can see that either side of it you've got orange and purple. And that is because red is a component of these colours. You mix yellow and red together, you get orange. You mix blue and red together, you get purple. So it goes without saying that both orange and purple work quite well with red. Bearing this in mind, I want to pick one of these colours to use as a shadow and a highlight. The reason I'm doing this is because I think if you go from a really dark red, to a really light red, it will look fine, but there's not as much visual interest. Having a range of colours spread across this miniature will help it look a bit more vibrant and add a bit of depth to the recesses. So, for the shadows, I'm gonna go with purple. The reason for this is if you try and darken orange, it kind of just turns into a brown. And we don't really want that. We don't want to muddy this miniature. We want it to be rich in the recesses. Otherwise, you may as well just do a dark red. So, that brings us to our first step, and that is to mix equal parts Phoenician purple with corn red. I've picked corn red because it's one of the richer, darker uh, reds that I actually have in my selection. Now, with this mix of purple and red, we're going to go over the whole of the squig's skin. now but when this is just the shadow colour later on it's going to look a lot nicer. And once you're done with that go ahead and use the corn red by itself to sketch in everywhere that you want it to be red. As I said before I was going to do the counter shading but I decided not to. So you can see I only actually add the red from about halfway up the squig's stomach and despite not using the counter shading this actually looks really nice in the end product. So when applying this red, you want to try and leave some of the purple under each of the skin folds, or whatever you want to call them. Any muscle joints and such, you want to leave a line of that purple. As you can see, just after that one layer, it's starting to take a bit more shape. You can see that the purple is working quite well as shadows. And as we mix corn red with the purple, it is a bit more of a gradual transition. That's something that I would like to mention about my paint method. I never really bother with um, glazes or feathering or 
like wet blending, all of those kinds of things. I don't mind them, I've used them from time to time, but I prefer just layering colours. I feel like mixing loads of colours and creating layers upon layers works just as well. So now that you've slapped some corn red all over it, we're going to move on to mixing corn red with Mephiston red, a slightly more vibrant red. And we're going to be basically going over everywhere that we've just gone with the corn red, except we're going to be doing it on a slightly smaller portion of those areas so that you're definitely leaving some of that corn red showing. This will create the transition from dark to light. If you've seen my orc skin painting tutorial, which I will leave a link to in a card up above and in the description below, you will know that the next step is probably going to be Mephiston Red by itself. So what I'm doing is I've got a few paints that I'm going between and each time I go from the darker one to the lighter one, I am doing an additional step in between where I mix the two colours to create a smoother transition. doing a layer of my fist on the red by itself, I decided I was going to flesh out some of the more fleshy areas, I suppose. So around the lips and the bottom half of the snout, I applied some, I mixed some Bugman's Glow with the fist on red and started to go over those areas. I also went over the various warts and bumps that the squig has on it as well. I then applied some straight Bugman's Glow to that, and then I mixed Bugman's Glow with Cadian Flesh Tone, and then a final highlight of Cadian Flesh Tone by itself. Now let's continue highlighting that skin, and the next step is going to be mixing Jacaro Orange with my fist on red. So whilst we didn't go with orange in the shadows because it would look a bit muddy, it will work really well as a highlight colour. Now we're going to be a lot more selective with where, with where we're applying this. It's going to be much more concentrated near the higher parts of each area on the squig. Then moving into our final skin highlight and that striped Jacaro orange, we're going to be even more selective. For me, I used a very limited amount on some of the highest raised muscles and components around the face. I did a bit more on the face than on the rest of the model because that's where you want to draw the attention. Plus, it has quite a lot of um, contours and stuff on its face, as in it's got quite high raised cheekbones and brows. It's got loads of wrinkles on its forehead, so I highlighted all of that with Chicago Orange. Now, I'm quite happy to hit, leave the skin here. We're going to move on to the mouth. And to begin with, I'm going to use the same purple that I used earlier, that Phronician purple. I'm going to cover its whole mouth in that. I'm not going to worry about being too clean and tidy yet, uh, because I will go in and do the teeth afterwards. So if you get any on the teeth, don't worry. But make sure to cut the tongue, the inside of the mouth, and the gummy areas. The highlighting process for the mouth is really quite simple. I mixed the Phronician purple with Gene Stealer purple, then I did a coat of Gene Stealer purple by itself, and then I mixed in a tiny bit of Shabti Bone to give a more organic looking colour to it, um, to just do the very tippy toppy areas of the tongue and gums. Just as we did with the squig body, make sure that you're highlighting more concentrated areas each time so that you're really starting to create a volume around these gums and stuff. <laughs> The hoofs were really simple. I just coated them in a layer of Abaddon Black, waited for that to dry, did a 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and Dawnstone, and then did a single highlight of Dawnstone. I didn't want to be too fancy. I'm not really wanting people to look at the hoofs of the squigs. I want them to concentrate on the face and stuff, so I'm putting in more effort there, and uh, not wanting to distract or put loads of detail into the hoofs for no reason. Now time for the teeth. And I wanted to do something a bit different. I always do teeth the exact same way 
And for this guy, I wanted it to look a bit more dirty. I mean, after all these are vicious animals that people just shreds and such. So I wanted to go with a bit more of a dark and icky colour. So I started with Scrag Brown, and as it sounds in the name, it's a bit of a gross brown. I coat all of the squig's teeth with this, and then I get out the shafty bone. I seriously use the shafty bone all the time. I... Definitely one of my top five paints, I think. Now this bit is quite simple. You can do as little or as much as you like. Basically, I'm going to do a bit of layering by mixing a shafty bone with the brown, uh, each time getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So you can do as many in between steps as you like, or just do like two or three. And then at the very end, I use a dot of screaming skull on the, to on the tip or edge of each tooth. And that is how you do the squig's teeth. <laughs> Lastly, we've got those rage-filled eyes of the squig. And we're quite fortunate with these sculpts. Their eyeballs are quite big. So unlike on most infantry units where you may be tempted to not bother painting the eyes, I would really encourage it with these. Not only will it help you practice pinpointing with your paintbrush, being a bit more careful, but it's also quite easy to do because of how large they are. So for this, I'm simply doing a flat coat of Corax White with a dot of Abaddon Black in the middle. Um, you could use a wash after applying the white if you want to bring down the white a bit, or just use a light gray, it's entirely up to you. Now that's how we paint all the organic parts of the squig. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the rider and all of the armor. And I'll be back in a few seconds, but for now you can have a look at the finished product. I gotta say, this model was a lot of fun to paint. I am really looking forward to doing the rest. But, I need to ask something of you. I am tempted to just go ahead and paint these guys red. But I want to know if any, if any of you viewers would like to see different colors for the squigs, because I am kind of tempted to do that as well. And if that's what you guys think is a good idea, then I'll, I'll film it. So yeah, make sure to leave comments on if you want me to do that or not. And if you're wondering how I paint the rider of this here, this little dude, then you're in luck because next week I am going to be painting the Beast Snagger Boys as part two of this three part Beast Snagger Box series. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see the other two videos in this series. I hope this has been some help to anyone out there who's just bought this Beast Snagger Box or if you're actually playing Age of Sigmar and you've got some squigs in your gloom spike gits and you thought this would be a good tutorial to use. I imagine it works completely fine. As I say, I hope this has been a big help. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, anything you choose to do, or thank you for just watching it. Uh, sharing this video would be hugely useful. So if you know anybody that you think would find this interesting, please send them a link. Other than that, there'll be various links in the description, including my Patreon campaign, where you get behind the scenes access and early access to YouTube videos, and a load of social media links. With all that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.